Hello everybody and welcome back to Arcade Spirits, where today we're going to finish up the birthday party, which has been pretty crazy so far. So I hope you all enjoy, and I'll be with you in a second. Um, okay, I guess if this is the thing about spending time with people, then I should probably hang out with, my no with Naomi and Ashley. I can smell disaster on the wing, and it smells sweet. As in, I can smell that box of birthday cupcakes one of the parents left near the ticket case with kids swimming around it, scavenging for their favorite icing colors. At first, my inner child is merely offended that someone thought one of those icing blob cupcake cakes was superior to an actual birthday cake. But there are clearly larger issues at stake than that. I want a chocolate! Don't take all the chocolate! I want to kick him. I want to kick him in the face. No fear! Everybody gets one, and mine's gotta be chocolate! I... just don't like kids sometimes! Finders keepers, losers weepers. The parents aren't paying attention. They're too busy complaining about their jobs and the weather and the PTA and stuff. Meaning that when the first cupcake is thrown, nobody is there to stop it. Ah! Stop it! Stop mm. it! Mm. I want chocolate! Mm. As blobby wads of icing and sponge cake go flying, I glance over to the coin-op games, which are about to get caught in the crossfire. Naomi, who's busy trying to unjam a joystick one of the kids waggled too hard, looks up to see the cupcake onslaught coming her way. As does Ashley, whose fuzzy costume is nice and inviting target for flying confectionery. Act fast, Ari. Uh, I, oh, I'm gonna, uh, I could try to save them both. I don't think it's gonna happen. Okay, good night, Subby. Thank you so much for coming by. I'm so I Hopefully you can hear me. Bye. Here, I'm going to give you a heart. I have to choose? I don't want to choose. Um, I feel like saving the game is the more practical thing to do, honestly. <gasps> Naprezu, thank you so much for seven months of the subscription. Doesn't it look cool? It's really cool. It's really fun so far. Thank you! Here, hang on. I'm gonna give hearts for you. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Okay. I need to save. Ah! Uh, I feel like a costume could get washed. A game is a little more. I need to save the game. Quickly, I hurl myself into the action. I think she. I thought she said goodnight. <laughs> my face! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Get down, Miss Naomi! <laughs> Numbness sets in as a multiple rounds of frosty coated mortar fire. Impact against my body. That is indeed us. That is us. We are. <laughs> when I finally hit the ground, my clothes are totally ruined. <laughs> but alas, my noble self sacrifice could not save them both. No! What? No! Oh, I'm so sorry. Punky, the fu Punky? Punky, it's fine. Pinky, the fun flex flamingo, is now covered in a wide variety of icing colors from across the visible spectrum. Ari, no! You were so young and pure. Naomi, it's so cold. <laughs> Lie still, Ari. I won't let you die on me. I'm not dying. The ice is just kind of cold and sticky and gross. Oh. By this point, the lackadaisical parents have finally noticed the pastry wars and are busy rounding up the combatants for various scoldings. Aww. Oh man, my costume's just wrecked. I need to get out of this A7 and put some stain treatment on it. Ari, can you cover the floor for me? Considering it's my fault you got caked, absolutely. It wasn't my fault, it was the child's fault. Eh, not your fault. I mean, I guess the games cost more than my fuzzy felt. I'll be back ASAP. Thank you. It just sounds you spelled that ASAP. That was so brave of you. I mean, okay, it was just cupcakes, but still, that was so brave. You saved the game we worked on together. Actually, it was only now that I noticed the joust game that was protected from a severe uh, and sustained cupcaking. 
I'm Naomi's hero of the day. She's smiling at me expectantly. Quick, Eri, say something cool. <laughs> nah, I'd take a cupcake for you any day. Oh, wait, no. She would probably like us to ask about the game. Um... The cute girl had to get out of the creepy costume. What a disaster. I know, right? If I make it about her, she'd be like, oh no, it was the, it was about the game. I don't know. I think this was funnier though. I'll try it. I'll take a cupcake for you any day, Naomi. If we, were if we were cornered in a cold, dark alley one horrible night, assaulted by baked goods, I'd happily take the sugar hit for you. Yay! I got a point! Well, in the amazingly unlikely event of exactly those circumstances happening, it's good to know I have someone protecting me. My Ooh. knight in shining icing! That's me! I'd better finish up my work here and get out of the way of the party, and you've got more work to do. Good luck! With a brief nod from Gavin, I snatch one of the official Funplex t-shirts to replace my cupcake top. After a few minutes in the bathroom to change and wipe icing off my pants, I'm ready to go again. Two problems in the can! Okay, cupcakes and tickets sorted out. As for that angry shouting parent by the driving games, I... Uh-oh. Looks like they went home. Problem solved. But the boy she was shouting at is gone too? Hey, Ari, you missed fire... This is the guy you missed, Lemonsy! Hey, Ari, you missed fireworks, and I don't mean by dancing. What happened? Queen Bee glances back briefly in the middle of playing some samurai-based fighting game. Oh, some... Be beep was screaming at this kid for no good reason. Eventually, the parents got into a shouting match. Tao talked them both down, but they decided to bail on the party. All I did was point out that we were right next to a donut shop, frequented by some very well-read cops. Drat, I was hoping to cool things off so they could keep enjoying the party. Don't sweat it, gal. You did good work out there. Yeah, I saw that impromptu cupcake shooting gallery. What a mess. And those stolen tickets? Man, kids can be jerks, but you gave it your best. You're looking pretty run down, though. Why not take a break? I have a solemn and sworn duty to bring peace to my arcade. Eh, if that. Go take five. <laughs> well, truthfully, I am pretty worn the heck out after all that. Tail's right. I need to step away from this craziness, if only for a few minutes. After a silent nod from Gavin to confirm it's cool with him, we're getting lots of, of silent nods. I slip away, headed for the employee lounge. What a day. Quirky co-workers, diehard pro gamers, volatile kids getting into vol volatile situations. I'd say it's a recipe for wackiness or some such cliche, but nothing, nothing's an easily dismissed cliche when it's happening to you directly. Within my fire, this is a brand new visual novel, like dating sim type game like Dream Daddy that I got a review copy for. So I contacted the developer, they contacted, they, they put out an offer and I, I signed up for it. And so yeah, it's brand spanking new, just came out. Isn't the penguin you? Penguin there, baby. And it's like set in like a future where like the arcade market never crashed and like the gaming market never crashed and all that. Frankly, I'm exhausted. Also, me personally, I have to pee. I drop down into one of the cheap folding gaming folding metal chairs in the employee break room, groaning and rolling my head back, trying to work out the kinks out of my sore shoulders. End spot and upside down kid. Huh. Is that kid crying, or is that... I think it's crying, because it's got weird tear... I thought those were eyes for a second. Oh, wait, I'm the one leaning backwards. I sit up and turn around instead. Oh, better. Wait, what's a kid doing back here? Hey, uh... I think he was hoping I wouldn't notice him. Um, hi. Hi, and you are Mikey. Okay, that's a start. Hi, Mikey. My name's Ari. So, what are you doing back here? This is an employees only area. Wait, there's a keypad. How'd you get in? The guy at the desk dropped this. He holds out a piece of paper with a door code written on it. Huh. Score one for Ash's wild storytelling being more fact than fiction. Okay. But you can't stay back here. It's, well, I don't see any knives or stabbing implements left out in the open. So I guess it's technically safe, but. Please don't say Whoa, me is he being there. bullied? Whoa, I'm gonna cry. Well, this is curious. I lean in so we can be on the same eye level. Something wrong? You can tell me. I work here, and I'm the gal who solves problems. No, no problems. Just don't want to. I go am out gonna here. cry. Don't you want to play with your friends? And it gives me the most cynical, bitter laugh I've ever heard out of a kindergartner. I don't got any friends. I don't know anybody here. Is this here. like his birthday party? 
Wouldn't that be crazy if it was his birthday party and his parents were just had just like invited his class or something? You would always go look for an arcade in every new country. What a good way to learn the language too, though. Like, people are always there. Stuff's always going on. You know, you learn the like lingo. My family just moved to the city, and before that, we lived in another city, and one more for that. But I was too little remember, to remember. I'm gonna. Oh my gosh. Mom told me to come to the party anyway, and I didn't want to, but she took me anyway. And then she left because she's got to work. Oh my gosh. New kid in town, huh? He nods mutely. Still, I should have busted him then and there. Brought him out back to the party where the other parents could supervise him. I should have told Gavin. I should have enforced the rules of the arcade. Okay, kid, I won't tell on you. If you want to stay back here for the rest of the party, I'll keep you company. Thanks. You really won't tell my mom? Nope. Why? I thought you'd make me want to go. Well, you'd want to make me go. You're an adult, like Mom. Hey, I wasn't always an adult. I was a kid once. The new kid in town, in fact. You were the new kid? Yeah, although for me, that started happening back when I was 10. And again, and again, moving from town to town, school to school, never really making any friends, not for years. Mom and Dad kept losing jobs and taking new ones, worse ones. They'd be working all day, too tired when they came home to do much of anything. After years and years of this, I stopped hoping things would get better. I decided I'd just take what I could get. I'd go with the flow. What does that mean? It means you don't care. Some things are good, some things are bad, but you don't care. You just do what you have to do without really being sad over it. But that sounds so sad. You weren't sad? It's sad to never care about anything, Smart kid. right? I guess I was sad. I just told myself I wasn't going to be sad, even though I really was. And then I bite my tongue, hard. Because my little involuntary trip down memory lane was not helping this kid out. Wouldn't have helped little Ari out, and if adult did this, if an adult did this for me. Instead, I decided to be the adult that little Ari would have needed. Um... Uh, oh shoot, hang on. It could be totally worse. Aliens could attack. It won't always be this bad. Life has ups and downs. Your mommy loves you. That's why she works hard. But this won't beat you, right? You're a tough kid. You take the time you need. I'll stay with you. Honestly, I like it won't always be this bad. Life has ups and downs. And you take the time you need. I'll stay with you. Both of those are things that... I don't know. I would have liked to have heard when I was younger, I guess. This is what I heard. And this. It doesn't really help sometimes, you know? When your parents aren't around. Uh, not the first one. Yeah, that one's, that one's a little bit too blase. Three, four, or five? Ida likes three. I don't know. That one is like, I don't know, kids know that. They know that their parents love them and that's why they're working hard, but it doesn't make it any better, you know? Yeah, all of them except it could be worse. Yeah, that one's not good. That one's hard. And I, I like this one because it's like letting the kid kind of figure out what they need to figure out on their own and like giving them the agency to do that but at the same time sometimes you don't want that you want somebody to tell you something you know you want you want a definitive answer not just a oh you'll figure it out you know it's like that doesn't that doesn't help me right now that's not what i need maybe i will go with the your mommy loves you that's what everybody seemed to kind of say too Sometimes it's, even if a kid knows that, I guess, it's still good to hear from somebody, you know? So, yeah. You know, your mommy loves you very much, Mikey. She loves you very, very much. When I was a kid, I was, well, I was mad at my parents for moving all the time, taking different jobs. It made things very hard for me. But now that I'm older, I know they were working hard because they loved me. They wanted the best for me, and they were doing their best to get it. Life can be hard. Sometimes it's just no fun. But there's one thing that's always there. Love. They love you. He shoots me a doubting look. One of those little doubting looks where they don't want to outright call something a lie, but can't quite swallow it. Mikey, if your mom was sad, what would you do to make her happy? 
I mean, if you had to go to school an extra two hours a day, would you do it? I guess. That's what she's doing. She's working very hard because she wants to make you happy. And she forced you to go to a birthday party because she wants you to make friends, you know? And it's the kind of thing that when you're a kid, and even an adult, you're like, I don't want to, you know? It's like, I don't want to do that. I don't, it, doesn't make me, I don't, it doesn't make me happy. But your parents are, like, trying to at least expose you to different things, like making friends and new experiences and blah, blah, blah. I'm not happy being alone or moving all the time. Neither is she, but she knows if she works hard, one day you won't be alone. You won't be moving all the time. I was a new kid, remember? But now I have a home with my best friend and a good job. I work in an arcade. How cool is that? It wasn't easy. My parents were often sad. I was often sad, but we pulled through, and so will you. Just remember, she loves you, and you love her. That'll get you through the sad times. Huh. It's not a great answer. It doesn't solve the problem, but it does make things feel a little easier on Mikey. From his long sigh, I can feel him releasing his sadness before offering a little smile. Not a big goofy grin, not the high of happiness, just simple understanding. I love money. It's sad, a lot. I know it's not always sad, and even if she left me here, I know she's coming back. Hey, you know what? you still got some time to enjoy the party. Even if you don't want to talk to the other kids, there's still a lot of games you can play. And hey, maybe you'll get to know someone while playing a game. Our kids are great for that. I'm sure a lot of them have sad times too, and they could use someone to play with, someone who understands. Okay. Thank you. I want to play the skee ball games. I'll spot you a few tokens. Let's get you rolling. I take his hand and lead him out back to the main room. Right, it's not exactly a problem some random stranger can fix with words, exactly. But it's like, and I like that they address that. It's like, you know what? My words didn't solve the issue, but it's still, sometimes it's just nice to hear, you know? And off he goes. Go, my little child. Be happy. I'm not fooling myself. I know I haven't fixed all Mikey's problems. I'm no child psychologist. That was entirely me, flying by the seat of my pants. But for one moment there, I was able to help someone in the same crappy situation I found myself long ago. Hey, didn't we say back earlier that, like, in that the, the the arcade could help people and that we could help people like like uh, she, she, said, she, said, she said you'd be surprised how we can help people in different ways not just with like games but like like with their gaming problems but like this is one of the situations where it's like a real person with a real life thing not really involving games but like we kind of helped a little bit you know well, that's interesting we're the Mari Kondo but Arcade! We're the Mari Kondo Arcade Guru! That's us! That's us! Fifteen years ago, everything changed. No more family vacations, no more arcade visits. We couldn't afford them, and they couldn't take time off work. The whole Cater family had to learn to settle, to accept the lot in life we'd been dealt, to simply go with the flow, never hoping, never wanting. Juniper did her best to pull me out of that mire. I'd only known her a few years, one of the few stable times in my life, but she knew the edge I'd been pushed to. Now, here I am. Today has been, well, bonkers. Alternately boring and hectic, surreal, and way too real. Yes, yeah, same game! It's been a little bit too real for me, too! But I can honestly say I'm more alive today than I have been in a very, very long time. Beep beep. Beep beep bay. Hmm? My emotional voice analysis subroutines combined with your body language suggest you're feeling very happy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I am. Ari Cater, real Sutter, uh, subtle, uh, mm. Like arcade, like that, like, like I, I thought it was kind of a pun on on arcade, right? Like a, like a, right? Am I right or wrong? Uh, how did you know? I just told you, silly. I mean, how did you know I'd love this job so much? Oh, that's oh, easy. I know. I didn't. What? I lied. I was forty-seven percent sure. An AI can't lie to me. Yeah, I'm an arcade arcader. I'm an arcader. Yeah, okay. If that's what it if that's what it was, then I'm good. Oh, it has elements that seem to click with your optimal social requirements, a fun atmosphere, spirit to coworkers, helping people out, and so on. I also cross-referenced your roommates postings talking about how much you enjoyed you enjoyed arcade visits when you were a kid. Still, 47%. But I was 99.97% sure that if I said I was 997 percent sure, you'd be willing to give it a try. And sometimes that's what it is, I think, is this little AI is teaching us that like even if you think your chances aren't great, sometimes it's worth it to take the risk. Another thing to thank Juniper for, I guess. You're a very weird little app, you know? Hooray! Hooray! I try to be!
Is that the end of the day? Oh boy. From the cars pulling up in the parking lot, it looks like the party's over. Uh, it's just about closing time for the arcade anyway. Most of the gamers have filed out by now if they hadn't already fled the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to go bug Gavin about my paperwork, but uh, that can wait. I'd rather go help someone with the tidying up or maybe see how our VIP gamers are doing. I don't know if Juniper's a dating option. She might start coming to their arcade, though. She works close by. She does work close by, so I'm, she might pop in on occasion. Not enough time to run around checking in with everyone, though. Who do I want to hang out with? Oh, um... Uh-oh. Uh, maybe I'll go help uh, Ashley quietly repair her costume. Ashley's pulled up a chair next to the ticket counter and is sewing fervently. I wander my way over to the prize counter for her to see if there's anything I can do. Need any help with Pinky? She looks really... Look at it, She's got an anime! She's got an anime shirt! Need any help with Pinky? Oh gosh, oh, it's really hi. nice of you, Ari! And I realize, I think this is the first time I've seen her out of the flamingo costume. She blushes really easily then, too. Apparently, she's not some half flamingo, half human hybrid. Of course I'm not a half bird, a mutant creature. What? How did you... Oh, did I not tell you? I'm a cosplayer slash arcade worker by day. And a psychic detective by night. I solve all matters of grisly crimes with my ability to read people's minds. Even now, I'm looking into your deepest thoughts. <laughs> Deep down to my mind, think of nothing. All my deep thoughts are of cats! This is bad. The first thing that popped in my mind was that video about the ten kittens playing in a castle made of boxes. So cute! All cats are cute. I want to squish them. Well, so what if Ashley knows about my love of cats? Okay, you got me. I'm a cataholic. Oh, God! She liked it! Ashley's laughter echoed through the quiet arcade. Relax, I'm just messing with ya. But in my defense, the physical look all over your face told me everything I needed to know. It's always weird seeing people out of their costumes. I've done the same thing with other cosplayers. Couldn't recognize them outside the wigs and makeup. I don't take it personally. Plus, maybe I'll even trick you when I'm in one of my other costumes. But for now, I gotta focus on helping Pinky out. How bad is it? Well, luckily, Pinky's arm is still intact. My sis job held up. But some kids pull out a few of my tail feathers. Look at her face. She's very unimpressed with that. And it totally is covered in cupcake goo. Ah, oh, right. Sorry about that. Eh, it's okay. This kind of stuff happens all the time. It's just more common at these chaotic birthday parties. I've become quite deft at fixing Pinky up after these events. See, look at that. That was my last stitch. Not bad. It looks almost new. Aw, oh, thank you, Zari. I can't thank believe I just said thank yous. And she said it like jinkies, but thank yous. <sighs> you know, you really did come out well there today. Come I don't know. I'm dyslexic. You should be proud of yourself, no matter what Kevin says about you. Oh, uh, wait, what? Well, I pooped. I think I'm going to go home and take a nice bath and relax. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. No, wait. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Come back. Here. Too late. She's gone. Guessing she was just messing with me anyway, right? With things winding down, there's just one last thing to take care of before I'm out the door. I wonder if she causes trouble in the arcade. If she, like, tells Gavin that... Naomi said something and she tells Naomi that Gavin said something and now she's trying to make drama between me and Gavin Your dog keeps whining is now pulling apart one of her toys a string at a time I know I'm getting to that point where I'm pretty freaking hungry. I, I forgot to eat lunch. Hey <laughs> I seek out Gavin to handle the remains of the day Ari good work today Thanks boss mid boss sub boss Gavin will do I can't say you've been a perfect employee, but my standards are impossibly high. So I'll just assume you were as close to perfect as is reasonable. Uh, you run an arcade, my dude. I'm not entirely sure why you consulted Percy regarding those tickets he's not on staff, but I suppose it's a minor issue. You know, I did my best, and he was the closest one to the situation, and I was hoping he would have seen something. Unfortunately, the cost of cleaning our carpets and costumes after the cupcake assault will be a chunk of change. But I suppose you did all you could there. I got you 3,000 bucks today, my guy! I'm pleased to say the sale of Mr. Movie's Magic Maze for a full three grand will indirectly offset quite a few of these costs. Thank you for remembering! I'm glad you consulted me on that and stuck to your guns on the pricing. Even if I'd be happy to be rid of that relic entirely. Why it's still here is a good question. Was I not clear I wanted it gone? Percy didn't want to break up the family. They're machines, not people. He also didn't want Naomi to be sad. 
Yes, well, Naomi, Naomi needs to learn to let go. I'd say, you're not the boss, though. You're not the real boss. You're not the real boss. Ahem. Yeah. There's the real boss. Are you giving our poor little friend Ari a hard time, Gavin, dear? Miss Francine, I thought you were napping. Let's Naomi's dreams matter, too, as does the dream of Percy, that poor fellow. Poor, isn't Percy sinking rich? Everyone Gavin, I know you mean you well, see? wanting to keep everyone's dreams afloat, but sacrifices made in that name which shatter the dreams of others, well, that's not what the funplex is, funplex is all about. Ari, you understand, yes, the reason why? Why I am, why am I here? That's the question she asked me during the interview. Now, I think I understand. I came here today looking for hope. Hope I could do more of my life and compromise, settle for what I can get, and go with the flow. Everybody I've met today is full of hope. Gamers chasing scores, people following their passions. Nobody here is willing to give up on their dreams. Not even you, Gavin. You know we're better than this, Gavin. We don't settle. We chase after our hopes and dreams and won't settle for anything less. I see. Eri, Miss Francine, I apologize. It's difficult to balance my idealism against my realism some days, but I know in my heart I need to err on the side of realism, even if my mind screams in protest. I can assume you are still keen to work here, Eri? I don't even hesitate before replying. Absolutely. Gavin fetches a nearby short stack of forms. Fill these out tonight, hand them in to me first thing in the morning, and welcome to the Funplex. Thanks, Gavin, my boy. Welcome to the family, I'd say, says Francie. I'm sure you'll fit in just fine, Ari. Oh, nice! Nice! One bus ride later, and it's home again, home again, jiggy jig. Trina, priority, home from work, bounds over eagerly to interrogate me on my day. So, how'd it go? It went well. Well or well? Really well. Your little app came through despite being terrifyingly omniscient and just a little bit unnerving. You forgot to mention adorable! That's wonderful! I'm so glad to hear that things worked out and you even came up with a smile like when you were a lifeguard! Huh, I guess I am smiling. Interesting. By the way... Oh, okay, she's gonna, she's gonna do it. There's just one teensy weensy <gasps> She does have to... She has you. kitten tights! Did she get fired? She got fired! Why? Oh, no. Exactly. Did you order a giant crate full of pizza bagels? It wasn't me. Um, did I neglect to mention that part of the terms and conditions? On the plus side, I know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. That is so many pizza bagels. That's so many. How much is that? How much is that? I just got a job. I just got a job. That's, well, that's like my entire paycheck out the window. And that's level one of Arcade Spirits Complete. Hey, look, you also won a prize. I did it! Look, at one of these for each level you clear, plus some extras for various endings and other hidden thingies. Now let's see your score. Oh, wow. We're we're on really good terms with uh, Naomi. Uh, Ashley and Percy. Yeah, this is pretty good. I'm not as good with Naomi as I thought I'd be. Okay, I'm handing it off with Naomi. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. I try. Also, look, look, I did only did a little bit. I only did a little bit of the basic. Also, you've scored 5,750 points. Nice. Keep talking with people and your score will go up, up, up. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level two? <gasps> yes. This game is super cute. I'm kind and I'm on good terms with cute girls and dad bod. That's really all that matters. And also, don't forget he's a rich dad bod. So, plus. These are the stats I expected from me. Yes, I I actually didn't think I did that many hearts. Like, heart points. I didn't think I was going to be that. I thought I was going to be a little bit more even. But, um, but no. That was pretty, that's pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. Uh, I think at some point, sometime I'd like to try, like, the aggressive one or what it, the gutsy one not aggressive but it can be aggressive i guess if i if i'm gonna get if i'm gonna get points up with um queen b i'd have to be gutsy and that's the end for that session i think i recorded or twitch streamed rather for about three hours and that was the end of that day so i hope you all enjoyed it's been really fun to stream actually on the stream we're on chapter eight now which is the final chapter so it's been it's been really really great and i hope you guys enjoy watching further and i will see you in next episode